So I like to welcome you to one of the two last talks of the first day of hash days. Um, I'm going to talk about firewall rule reviews. And uh, yesterday when we were um, at the speaker's dinner, a long-term colleague of mine told me, well, uh, your topic is very old and very dusty and I won't come to this talk because it might be very boring. And so I'm very glad that so many people are using uh, Apple Maps and are lost in this room instead of the other one. Um, <coughs> well, of course, firewall rule reviews is a, is a very traditional topic in, in my opinion, um, but I think we have a lot of experience uh, collected in the last uh, two decades, and I'd like to present you some of our experience in this field. Um, after a quick introduction, I'm going to uh, explain our um, approach to do the modeling of firewall rules and to do the reviews. And then we have enough time in the end, we uh, may ask some questions. <coughs> well, first of all, who am I? My name is Mark Ruef. I'm here from Switzerland. Um, I'm uh, for the third time uh, presenting at Hash Days. Um, I, um, I am co-owner of a company called Skip in Zurich. We are providing consulting services and we are doing some auditing and forensics. And I have a website and I wrote some books about the topic. <coughs> well, the goal of a firewall rule review is uh, you, you want to determine insecure rules to increase security. You want uh, to determine inefficient rules, wrong rules and obsolete rules. And if you are able to, to identify those rules, you are going uh, or you will be able to improve the quality of your firewalling. So uh, I will show you different approaches and our methodology, how we approach firewall rule reviews. And um, if the time allows it, I'm going to present you some further possibilities. Basic question is, are firewall rules obsolete? or are firewalls obsolete. Uh, in this May was a, a quick and, and short sh uh, shitstorm uh, in the blogosphere and on Twitter. Uh, many people think that firewalls are obsolete and, and it, it doesn't make sense to use firewalls at all. I don't really share this opinion. I think uh, firewall is, is a good, uh, good way to improve network security. Um, but of course, you shouldn't rely on, on firewalls only or, or antivirus encryption, whatever. It it's uh, should be a holistic approach which uh, yeah, respects all different kinds of, of, of threats and, and possibilities. Um, of course, if, you're, uh, if the core of your network and your applications is secure, you wouldn't have to use firewalls because everything would be perfect, but uh, we don't live in a perfect world, so firewalls might help you to improve the security of your environment. These are the steps that are required to do a firewall rules an a rule analysis, and we will go through them. First of all, you have to extract, um, or, or to, to um, sorry, first of all, you have to extract the firewall rules, and then you can work with the firewall rules. You, you um, may be able to parse the firewall rule sets dissect different objects and services and stuff like that. And then you might be able to determine global settings, which leads to the possibility to identify weaknesses and to eliminate them. <coughs> um, there are different approaches how to, to work with firewalls and firewall rule sets. Uh, we prefer exported files. That means uh, we go, uh, we say a customer that he has to send us the, the configuration setting or the rule set of his firewall. Uh, because it's much faster, it's more reliable, and we don't have a, um, a user face abstraction layer. Um, and I will come to that later. But still, screenshots might be a good idea, or an, uh, an on-site analysis where you sit in front of the, 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 the front end of the firewall. Uh, you've got an easy walkthrough. Uh, you might be able to enhance your report with uh, visual aspects. Uh, and um, it's usually much easier to do some cross-checks uh, if you want to, to parse the firewall rule sets and you have some implications. It's usually good to see is your impli uh, implication correct also on the user interface. And sometimes it's your last hope because um, you only ha can work with the, the, the user interface because uh, 
some firewalls don't allow you to export the rule sets properly or you will get a, a quirky file format which you, uh, you're not able to parse and so it's, it's your last hope to, to approach the, the system. Getting the firewall rule sets is not easy and it's different on every different product. Uh, as you can see, Astaro has, for example, th uh, three different ways to export the firewall rule sets. And uh, the funny thing is um, these three different ways won't um, collect the exact same rule set. You will get a lot of the data will be the same, but there are some differences and it depends uh, how the customer was able to export the rule set, what you can do with it. And uh, there are different formats. Um, whether uh, you do an export with the, uh, a script which is pretty much undocumented or if you do the, the backup and restore on the web admin interface. Um, yeah, it's, it's um, usually the customer is responsible to bring us, uh, bring us the firewall rule set and we have to give him a step-by-step -step, uh, how to and, and sometimes it's not that easy because for different reasons he can't access different services or he has disabled services or he has an, a very old product that doesn't support for example SSH or, or whatever. So sometimes it's, it's a bit uh, hard to, to communicate with the customer to get the data that is uh, important for you. <coughs> If you get the firewall rule set exported, there's the next uh, problem approaching. Uh, it's that um, the different products use different formats for the firewall rule sets. So, for example, um, Astaro, Checkpoint, and FortiGate have array based um, rule sets, which is primarily cool but uh, sometimes hard to read uh, if you don't parse it. Um, I personally prefer uh, command line based rule sets because they are very simple, one line, one rule. Uh, Cisco and Citrix Netscaler are very popular. And some products use INI files. Uh, most popular examples are McAfee and SonicWall. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's very traditional, but, but uh, it works. Um, what's very different or, or, or very exotic is that McAfee Web Gateway provides um, any file, uh, an, an XML file as an export, but inside the XML file is, is embedded or en encapsulated an any file. So uh, they say they are able to export XML files, but basically it's just a container for any files. And, and you have very different uh, um, understandings for XML files, Airlock, Clear, uh, ClearSwift, and Totemo Trustmail. Um, all use XML files, but the, the config format is, is very different and they have a very different approach how to, to uh, create the whole, the whole construct. So um, if you are able to, uh, to write a parser for a firewall rule set, you usually or you never are able to use the same parser for a different product. So this is an example of Cisco ASA. As you can see, one line, one rule basically. I like that because it's very simple and, and simple is, is always good. This is um, part of an of a checkpoint rule set. As you can see, it's it's more like a tree. It's it's um, yeah, you, you are able to, to to do connections and to do more complex stuff, and, and it makes it much harder to understand the firewall rule set and, and to work with it, especially if you if you haven't parsed it. So. The basic attributes of, of a firewall rule for me is, is you have a source, host or net, you have a source port, destination host, destination port, a protocol and an action, as you can see here. Some firewall allow additional um, attributes for your rules. F for example, you, you can uh, define time frames or you can define priorities, quality of service. Uh, whatever and and that's very very nice to have especially if you if you want to improve the security of your environment but uh, firewall rule analysis becomes much much more complex if you have attributes which are uh, kind of exotic if we do a very simplified firewall rule analysis uh, we focus on the the six basic attributes but uh, if there is a product which introduces an, an additional functionality we try to to respect that too and Sometimes it's not easy because you don't really understand what, what is important and, and uh, how the different uh, features work. So then we try to, to create a table-based format of the firewall 
rule set as a very simplified form, as you can see the, the six basic attributes of a firewall rule. And then we try to find weaknesses in these rules. And these are few of the things on our checklist we are trying to identify. Uh, the worst thing basically are any rules which allow any traffic and there are um, more complex weaknesses like um, mashup of, of objects. For example, if you have uh, in one rule um, a high security system and also uh, some, some kind of public service is defined in one rule and, and, and the same rule is applied for both um, objects, but they aren't very at the same level of security, it's, it's, it's very problematic. Um, and of course, we try to identify insecure rules uh, if you use um, very old school protocols uh, without encryption or overlapping objects and, and stuff like that. <coughs> um, usually, you, you have to have a lot of experience in the network field and in the, the, the application security field to understand how um, these weaknesses really affect the firewall rule set. That means um, most of the, the, the guys that do the firewall rule analysis at our company are uh, coming from, from the network and they understand the problems. They have integrated firewall systems or they have maintain, maintained them. So it it's, uh, ma makes them a lot of uh, a bit of a head to, to understand what the problems might be. Then we try to identify these, these uh, insecurities. Uh, for example, the any rule. There are some here uh, and we try to identify the risk for the different rules. And then we suggest how these risks might be mitigated. Um, of course, to understand the, the target network of a customer, you, you have to understand the processes, you have to understand the layout, the topology of the network. So sometimes our suggestions are, are uh, not respecting these details. So it's, it's often so that the customer says, so, no, we can't implement this because this product uh, has to use Telnet because it doesn't support SSH and stuff like that. But usually the, the primary goal is to, to tighten the, the, the rule set as far as possible without distracting the, the daily, daily work or daily traffic on the network. A simple firewall rule analysis of an inline element is, is very simple, um, but most customers try to run redundant firewall environments. And then if you have to do a firewall rule analysis, you have to respect that though there are two different firewalls and basically they have to have the same <coughs> rule set, but it's not easy if you have a high red redundancy and you have to verify, cross-check if the rules are exactly the same. Um, it takes quite a lot of work or you have to do a lot of parsing. Um, and in most cases, when a customer says uh, um, they have a redundant system and uh, both firewalls are installed exactly the same, that's, that's never true. Uh, it's only true if they do it automatically, if they have scripts which are um, um, mirroring the, the system and the rules. But if they try to do it manually, it, it always fails. We have always differences. Um, from an attacker point of view, of, of view it's usually interesting because um, if you have a firewall rule um, established on firewall A and not as established on firewall B, you hope to get the traffic to firewall B because there are uh, you aren't limited with this path. Another level of complexity comes with multi-tier firewalls. No firewall allows a direct connection between two points. If you have a single tier firewall it's or an inline element, you have uh, point A which communicates through firewall to point B. And if you have a, mul a multi-tier um, environment, you have multiple firewalls chained together. And this introduces additional complexity because you have to consider every tier and the effort grows exponentially because you have to, um, if, you, if you put uh, different firewalls in line and chain them, you have some kind of mashup of rules. Sometimes there is a rule on the first firewall and there, there isn't a rule on the second firewall. Sometimes it's swapped, sometimes uh, there are rules on, uh, on both firewalls. And you have to find out what, what kind of traffic really goes through all these elements or all these, um, yeah, these different firewalls. 
Um, furthermore, uh, you have to, to find out uh, what the priority is of the firewall rule sets. Sometimes, uh, for example, if you have a firewall rule which um, is combined with an intrusion prevention system and uh, the next firewall isn't, um, it's sometimes really hard to find out what the, really the, the, the real world or the, the, the firewall rule set is that is really established in the real world. So because it's really hard from, from, from a reviewer point of view to understand the whole complexity of the system, we always suggest, and, uh, su suggest um, towards our customers to do a workshop to, to discuss our findings, to discuss our approach, to discuss what, what ideas we have. And um, sometimes uh, the customer can give very good feedback, um, more information about uh, network topology or, or routing aspects, and then you realize that some vulnerabilities or, or weaknesses you uh, were referring to aren't really established in, in the real world. But firewalls aren't that simple anymore like let's say uh, 15 or 20 years ago, uh, you have a lot of, of additional features, um, antivirus or, or you have caching, you have uh, HTTP proxy capabilities, and um <coughs> many firewalls allow global settings. For example, you can define, okay, I want to enable antivirus for all communications, or uh, I want to enable auto-update for this antivirus. So firewall rule analysis also have to, to respect these global settings and um, sometimes they are not part of the, the, the basic firewall rule, sometimes they are part of an additional config file and you have to find out, okay, uh, SonicWall is, is, is um, storing this data there and you have to collect all the data and sometimes it's really not easy, especially if a customer comes to us with a product that we never have tested before we usually have a few days to find out how this product really works and, and how we get the, the data that is important for us. For the global settings, we um, have the same approach like for, for configuration re uh, reviews. We are identifying all different settings that are um, provided. Then we identify the current value, we uh, determine the, the recommended value, the value that we recommend to increase the level of security and if there is a difference we um, provide a risk rating for this uh, potential weakness. So if you have done the firewall rule analysis of the, of the traditional rules and if, if you have uh, done a config review of the global settings um, you give the, the, the recommendations to the customer and he is going to implement most of them, hopefully, or, or all. Um, but there are rules remaining. Some rules can't be touched because they must be like they are. Or, or uh, the new rules, the improved rules, are have the best level of security, but they have to be like they are because you, are, you want to provide a service. So um, our idea is to, to, uh, to rate the remaining rules or, or to rate the, the established rules. And uh, we have different approaches and we, we, we aren't really, uh, um, didn't really came to a conclusion. We are still experimenting a bit in this field. So uh, one of the approaches is to use uh, CVSS to rate the different rules. And here is a very simple example for um, typical connect uh, typical connections over a firewall um, and this scoring should help you to see okay this kind of communication is the most severe or is the most risky because uh, there are very uh, the, the systems are very important or, or uh, very insecure services are, are provided or um, uh, you have a, a very wide attacker uh, attack surface so this li list would help you to identify rules which if you could, uh, you should disable them and use different different approach to provide the data in your network. So we did a lot of firewall rule reviews and tried to um, collect some statistical data. Here you can see the findings, the different um, findings we are looking for with our checklist. 
Um, and this graphic illustrates that the two different things. Um, there are problems which usually affect most customers. Um, typical pro uh, uh, problems are uh, that, that the logging of rules isn't really enabled. Um, any rules is something that you find everywhere, sometimes sooner or later. And this graph shows the most, or the, the, the findings that we see the most. Any rules, bi-directional rule pairs, uh, again, any rules with the destination that contains any. Um, so really, the, the, and any finding is always a high finding, and we always report it and, and think that, uh, that that's not correct, because uh, that's not the tight viable rule set. Um, if you want to use any rules, you could uh, put a, a simple router in it, and uh, it does basically the same. <coughs> When we do a firewall rule analysis for the first time, um, we see uh, we have uh, I've used um, the, the bigger pr uh, projects with at least 300 rules. We see for the first time analysis between 20 and 30 percent of the rules that contain weaknesses, and we suggest our customers to do an anomaly, uh, analysis, and we. Uh, especially if the, if the rule set is always um, changed and there are improvements, we, see s we still see between 7 and 10 percent uh, of weaknesses in the rule sets. Um, we suggest to do a, an, um, an analysis once a year, um, a full analysis, and um, it makes sense if you have further changes or, or uh, larger changes to do an, an incremental analysis of the changes. So why are there so many problems in firewalls? I mean, uh, the topic is old and dusty, as said in the beginning. Um, but still, uh, we are failing with the same problems that we did 10, 20 years ago. Um, there are many mistakes, a lot of laziness, um, and a lot of misinformation and misunderstanding, uh, especially if you in large environments, corporate environments, it's not unusual that the, the, the person that implements a product doesn't really know which kind of ports that are required and the vendor states, okay, we need uh, 30,000 ports to communicate with the, the different hosts. That's not unusual. And because time is, is precious, they put in an any rule or a very wide definition of, of ports and uh, yeah, that makes rules much insecure. So that was my presentation. I like to summary, uh, firewall rules are very important. Extraction, parsing, and dissection of a firewall rule set is, is a very interesting thing, and uh, I think it makes sense uh, to, to, to work with firewalls and to try to improve them because they are still an important part in the network. And uh, we always see the same weaknesses over and over again. That's not a problem for, for us because it makes our job a bit easier, but it's a problem for the customers. Um, yeah, because it's it's it seems that's very hard to to improve for them. Um, yeah, and, uh, and the good firewall rule analysis respects the peripheral aspects um, of a firewall rule, like uh, rule comments and logging, are nearly as important as as if you have a broad definition of ports or if you use any rules. There is some documentation how we do that. Uh, it's everything is on German. I'm sorry for that. And have a nice day. <laughs>